Hello and welcome back. Today's session is about activity 3. So let's start. Activity 3 Potential Gradient The aim of this activity is to study the variation in potential draw with length of a wire for a steady current. The material and the apparatus required are potentiometer or a meter bridge, a DC power supply, voltmeter or a multimeter, rheostat, single plug key, jockey and connecting wires. Now most of these uh, apparatus are known to you. What we have not seen is a potentiometer, meter bridge and jockey. What we need in this activity is a wire having some resistance. Like the nichrome wire which we had seen earlier. Potentiometer or a meter bridge has wire mounted on it. Alright? And these apparatus are easily available in any of the laboratories. Hence, we will be using them. Alright, so let's see how they look like. This is a meter bridge which is used in different experiments. And this is a potentiometer. Alright, so this has, you can see, 4 meters of wire. This is a meter bridge means it has one meter of wire. This is called a jockey. After connecting it in the circuit, we can slide it over a wire. In a way, it rides the wire. We'll be using it in this activity. Now let us understand what is area of cross section. All right. If we consider a cylinder, right, then you can see here, this is the cross-sectional area or we can say area of cross-section. So, if we see this, this is the length of the cylinder, this is the length of the cylinder and this is the area of cross-section or this is the area of cross-section. Is that understood? We will take another example. This is a cylinder, right? So, if I have a cross section, then this you can see is the area of cross section. Alright, even this is the area. Alright, so you, you must have understood what is area of cross section. Now, I have taken a cylinder because a wire is cylindrical in nature. Let's understand the theory. Let us consider a wire having some resistance. Say wire AB. Across which source of steady EMF is connected. That is a constant potential difference is applied between the two ends of the wire. Let the wire be of uniform cross-sectional area and composition throughout its entire length. So, let us consider this wire AB and apply some constant voltage across this length of the wire. Alright? So, we will put some resistance in the circuit and apply this voltage across AB. Here in this activity, I have used a constant voltage source. Hence, if the resistance in the circuit is constant, the current in the circuit will be almost steady. Alright? We know that resistance of a wire is directly proportional to its length and inversely proportional to its area of cross-section. Alright? That means 
resistance is proportional to length upon area of cross section. Hence, I can write R equal to some constant times length of the wire divided by its area of cross section. Right? That is rho times L upon A where R is the resistance of the wire. Rho is called the resistivity of the wire. It is constant of proportionality. L is the length of the wire and A is the area of cross section. We also know that rho does not depend on the dimensions of the wire, but it depends on the material, that is the composition of the wire and its temperature, right? That means if the composition of the wire is constant throughout its length and its temperature is constant, then its resistivity is constant. Also, if area of cross section of the given wire is constant throughout its length, then we can say resistance per unit length is constant. Alright? Now, let us choose any two points on this wire. Any two points. Here, one and here. Or maybe this and this. So, let us choose any two points on this wire and if V is the potential difference between these two points of the wire, then V is directly proportional to the length of the wire between these two chosen points. Alright? Of course, we have to remember a steady current is flowing through the wire. And this fact is true only if the wire is of uniform cross-sectional area and composition throughout its entire length. So, we can state the principle. If a steady current is flowing through a wire of uniform area of cross-section and having its resistance per unit length constant, then Potential drop V across any two points of the wire is directly proportional to the length L between those two points. Alright? That is, V is proportional to L or V is equal to some constant times L. Let us denote this constant by K. So, V is equal to KL or K is equal to V upon L. This quantity V upon L is called potential gradient. So, this is the given circuit diagram. Alright. Where E is a battery or DC source. This symbol is also used for battery. Alright. K is a single plug key, RH is the rheostat, V is the voltmeter and J represents the jockey. Now, let us understand the procedure. Make the connections as shown in the figure. Then, you have to put on the source. After that, Gently press the jockey at 20 cm length of the wire away from its end A. Note down the corresponding voltmeter reading. Now move the jockey along the wire away from its end A and note the voltmeter reading for 40 cm length of the wire 60 cm length of the wire and 80 cm length of the wire. Record all these readings in a tabular column. After this, we will have to calculate the ratio of V by L. Alright, that means we have to calculate the potential gradient.
Okay. Let us now connect the circuit. So let's see the circuit diagram. By now you already know how to read a circuit. Alright. So let's start. First of all, let us arrange the apparatus as per the circuit diagram. Alright. So there is a DC source, key, a rheostat, wire AB and a voltmeter. Alright. So let us start from positive terminal of the source. Let us connect. The positive terminal of the source is connected to one end of the key. The other end of the key is connected to the end A of the wire. Alright. So now end A is connected to positive terminal of the source. That means end A of the wire is at higher potential. Hence, positive terminal of the voltmeter will be connected to A. Alright. Now let us see the negative terminal of the source. It is connected to fixed end of the rheostat. The variable end of the rheostat is connected to end B of the wire. Alright. And Negative terminal of the voltmeter is connected to the jockey. We'll slide the jockey over the wire. Alright. Let us now connect the actual circuit. Here I have used a constant voltage source. Alright. So since the resistance in the circuit is unchanged, Current flowing through the circuit is almost constant. So we can say a steady current will flow through the wire. If any other source is used or a simple battery is used, an emitter can be connected in series in this circuit and the current can be monitored. Alright, before I start this activity, I would like to mention the leads of all the connecting wires were clean and also the wire of the meter bridge was checked for its uniformity. That is, its diameter, its diameter was checked and was found to be constant throughout the length of the wire. Alright, so let's connect. This is a meter bridge and as explained we are using only the wire in this activity. We can use any other wire having some resistance and not necessarily this meter bridge. So let's start. Positive terminal of this source is connected to one end of the key. Alright. We, twist, we have to twist the wire before connecting. The other end of the key is connected to one end of the wire which we have denoted as A in the circuit diagram. Positive terminal of the source is connected to end A. That means it is at higher potential. So let us select the range of the voltmeter is 20 volts and you can see the positive terminal of the voltmeter is connected to the point A. Alright. The negative terminal of the source is connected to fixed end of the rheostat. Alright. The variable end of the rheostat is connected to the other end of the wire that which we have marked as B. So the negative terminal is connected to end B and positive terminal is connected to end A. 
so we have applied some voltage across the wire now negative terminal of the voltmeter is connected to jockey so let us keep the observation table ready all right so we have observation number length of the wire voltage drop across the length of the wire and potential gradient we denote length of the wire by l and we measure it in centimeters okay so voltage drop across the length of the wire is denoted by v and it is measured in volts and potential gradient is v by l and unit is volts per centimeter all right okay so we are going to take four readings 1 2 3 and 4 so we've get we our tabular column is ready let's perform the experiment and record the readings in this tabular column all right hold the jockey at 20 cm length of the wire you can see there is no voltage seen on the voltmeter that is because the source is on but the key was not inserted so you have to insert the key check whether the source is on voltage drop across 20 cm length of the wire is 0.41 volts 20 cm length of wire voltage drop found is 0.41 right now let us find out the voltage drop across 40 cm length of the wire and it is seen it is 0.83 volts 40 cm length of wire voltage drop found is 0.83 correct similarly voltage drop across 60 cm length of the wire is found to be 1.24 volts for 60 cm length of wire we found the voltage drop to be 1.24 correct and across 80 cm length of the wire the voltage drop is 1.66 volts all right 80 cm length of the wire we found voltage drop is 1.66 okay so we have completed this activity let us switch off the source and remove the key now let us calculate the potential gradient so we have to find v divided by l all right so 0.41 divided by 20 what we get is 0.02050 right 0.83 divided by 40 we get 0.02075 1.24 divided by 60 we get 0.02067 and 1.66 divided by 80 we get 0.02075 if you see this value of v by l you can see that they are almost equal right so we can find the mean value for potential gradient so 0.02050 plus 0.02075 Plus zero point zero two zero six seven plus zero point zero two zero seven five. All right. If we add all these together, we get zero point zero eight two six seven. Now, what will be the mean value? 
mean value equal to 0 0.08267 divided by 4. That gives you almost equal to 0 0.021 volts per centimeter. Okay. So the result is potential gradient that is the ratio V by L along the current carrying wire is found to be constant within the limits of experimental error. And its mean value is equal to 0 0.021 volts per centimeter. All right. Let us see the precautions which we have to take while performing this activity. All right. Zero error in the voltmeter in case if there is any should be corrected by adjusting the screw provided at the base of the needle. All right. The current in the wire should remain constant throughout the experiment. Correct? So it can be monitored by an emitter and readjusted whenever necessary with the help of a rheostat. Do not press the wire too hard with the jockey while noting down the observations or else there is a possibility that the wire will become non-uniform. At these points, during the course of time. Check for uniformity of the wire at its various points before the start of the experiment. Alright. If wire is non-uniform, the potential gradient will not be constant. Hence, we have to take a wire which has a uniform cross-sectional area. Alright. I hope you have understood this activity very well and also you must have enjoyed it. That's all for today. See you next time.